This chapter introduces you to the look and feel of QuickBooks Online. Let's talk about what you'll learn in this chapter. First, you'll learn about QBO's three main menus, the navigation bar, the new button, and the gear menu. After that, we'll go over what a transaction is and what QuickBooks needs from you when you're recording one. Last, you'll discover a trick that lets you have multiple transactions, menus, or reports open at the same time. QuickBooks is a powerful tool, but without a solid knowledge of the basics, you could miss the why behind how it works. Any software can look intimidating to a new user. You see so many buttons, you don't even know what they do. You understand what you want the program to do, but you don't know which buttons to push to get that result. The rest of this chapter is designed to help you with that initial feeling of being overwhelmed that comes with a new system. Everything in QuickBooks can be accessed through three main menus in QuickBooks. The navigation bar, the new button, and the gear menu. We'll show you how to use the navigation bar to find something that's already been entered into QuickBooks. Then we'll use the new button to record your new transactions. After that, we'll cover what the gear menu is for and its most important parts. Understanding these three menus helps you keep track of the purpose of QuickBooks and how to follow the proper workflow. Most of the time when you're in QuickBooks, you'll see the navigation bar, or the nav, on the left side of your screen. It's a menu that helps you find things that you've already recorded in QuickBooks. From the nav bar, you can access the banking center, which is a list of transactions that have already been downloaded from your bank. These transactions have already happened and you use the Banking tab to add them into QuickBooks. You also see a list of Sales or Invoices from the Sales and Invoices tab. Again, these are transactions that have already happened. You can also use this section to check in on your customers by selecting the customer and viewing their balances. You'll learn more about this list later on. From the same menu, you can also view Products and Services list. This lets you look at information about the things your business buys and sells. And we have an entire chapter about that coming up. The Expenses menu is similar to the Sales and Invoices tab. First, you'll find a list of all the expenses you've already recorded in QuickBooks. You can select Vendors and see a list of all of the people and businesses that you've already spent money with. The Payroll section brings you to the Payroll Center. Right now, we don't have the Payroll Center turned on, but we will in a later chapter. The Reports Center helps you run reports on every aspect of your business. At the top, you can see the profit and loss and the balance sheet. But if you want to dig a little deeper and you don't know the name of a report, just search for it up here. Otherwise, you can scroll down and find any report you'd like. The Taxes tab takes you to the Sales Tax Center. You'll only need this tab if you sell taxable products or services. Then there's the Accounting tab, which shows you your chart of accounts. This is the hub of your accounting for your business. It's crucial that your chart of accounts is laid out properly. We have an entire chapter for you coming up. The Apps tab keeps track of any third-party applications that you've connected to QuickBooks Online. Not every business uses apps, but they can be helpful in extending the capabilities of QBO. The app listing here, you can find any third-party app that might be useful for your business. In the next topic, you learn about another important feature, the New button. The navigation bar is great for looking up things that have already happened. But what happens when you want to add something new? For that, you use the New button. The New button lets you record new transactions into QuickBooks at any time. When you click the New button, you'll see a list of transactions that you can record. The transactions are separated into categories, and it makes it a little easier to find what you need. Note that your new menu might look a little different than what you see here. When you signed up for QBO, you were asked what role did you serve in your business. If you chose that you were the owner, your new menu looks like this. It does all the same things as the other new menu, but the options are phrased or labeled a little different. If you'd like to switch from the one new menu to the other, select the gear icon. 
then Account and Settings. In the Advanced Settings, you can change your User View. Right now, this menu is pretty daunting, but by the end of the training, you'll understand when to use each of these transactions. The third place that you find what you're looking for is the Gear menu. This is where you set up things like your account settings, users, and sales forms. All of these are very important, but they're not the kind of thing that you access on a daily basis. For example, reconciliations are usually performed once a month, so you only need to open this menu when your bank sends you your monthly statement. Budgeting is usually done once a year or whenever you start a new project. The account and settings are things that you use a lot but only set up when you start your QuickBooks. Once they're there and set, you usually leave them alone. In fact, we often call the gear icon the set it and forget it menu because it's used so infrequently. The things that you find in the gear menu are very important and they have a dramatic impact on how you use QuickBooks, but it's not designed for day-to-day -day use. So far, you've learned a lot about how to set up your company, but this is a good time to take a step back and think about why you use QuickBooks. At its core, QuickBooks is bookkeeping software. Bookkeeping is the process of collecting past financial exchanges into an organized history. Think of bookkeepers like financial historians. Regular historians collect the stories of people and events from the past. Bookkeepers do the same thing, but the stories they collect are about the financial transactions of your business. So, what is the end goal of QuickBooks? To help you make business decisions and to navigate your company's financial future. How do transactions fit into this goal? If you accurately track your transactions, then you'll end up with an accurate financial history. If you enter limited or inaccurate transactions, then the information you get out of QuickBooks will be just as limited or inaccurate. You'll spend a lot of this class looking at and entering transactions. As you continue, keep that in mind, that transactions are the entire reason to use QuickBooks. If information isn't recorded on a transaction, you won't be able to find it on a report in the future. The first example we'll look at is a sales transaction. Select New and then Invoice. You record an invoice when you charge a customer for a product or service and get paid later. An invoice can be sent through email or printed out and given to a customer. Let's take a look at this transaction. The first thing you see on the invoice is the customer field, and this is the who of the transaction. In the middle, we see a lot of information. The most important thing here is the date because that determines when the income shows up on financial statements. It also helps QuickBooks know when payment is due. This is the when of the transaction. Towards the bottom, you see the product and service area and a description. This is the area where you describe what you're charging a customer for. This is the what of the invoice. At the top right, you see the balance due. This is the how much. The four elements of any transaction are who, when, what, and how much. Let's close the invoice and look at a different transaction. Let's go back to the New button and look at a check. You enter a check in QuickBooks when you write a physical handwritten check in the real world, or when you want QuickBooks to print a check for you. Checks are very different from invoices. For one thing, a check is a record of spending money rather than recording income. But even though they're very different, the forms are almost identical. This is a big advantage to using QuickBooks Online because nearly all the forms look alike. Just like on the invoice, the who of the transaction is at the top left. Then you see when you wrote the check. And then you see what you spent your money on. Finally, you see how much the check was for. Once you've learned how to enter one transaction, you've pretty much learned how to enter them all. The same four parts are needed for invoices, sales receipts, checks, bills, or any other transaction in QuickBooks Online. In the next topic, you learn a trick for opening multiple tabs in your browser. 
QuickBooks Online is a powerful software with many capabilities. But if you're used to desktop version of QuickBooks, you may be disappointed to see that QuickBooks Online only shows one window at a time. This is a limit faced by all web-based programs. Luckily, there's a simple solution to this, multiple tabs. Most web browsers let you right-click on a link or a page and open that link in another tab. This trick allows you to have many screens open for the same company file. This feature can be used throughout QuickBooks to open multiple tabs, even with multiple transactions. But remember, you can only be logged into one QBO company file at a time.